Let us not leave out of here the same as we came in, but be, be much more blessed than we came in to, uh, from the first, Lord, tonight, Lord. And just, Lord, which let your will be done. Lord, bless the speaker to speak the words. God, let the hearers hear the words. And, Lord, let your will be done in the midst of us. Bless the testimonies also and the songs that are going to come forth. And we're going to bless you for all this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're going to open up for any songs, any testimonies, any praises. Please feel free. I have something to say. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we hear you. I want to thank God for having me to come here and to speak
Jesus just kept doing great and wonderful things in my life. Just great things by His Spirit. He just keeps teaching me by His Spirit, so that all of a sudden, by my Spirit, it has nothing to do with you. He just showed me how great I are, and how great His life is, and how my life is nothing. And I'm just agreeing with them to give up my life and see how far better it is to be in the kingdom and to be a joint heir with Christ. The benefit that comes from this, the things that he's teaching me, all of the knowledge, the fear is going away, the unbelief is going away. I don't Amen. I don't listen to the lies anymore. I don't reason with them anymore. I reason with Jesus. Amen. You know what? Jesus don't care about my mistakes. What he do? You know what he care about? He care about me learning not to make them anymore. And allow them to make them. Oh, yeah. That's what he care about. So I don't tell him how hard I'm And then I don't listen to the spirit when they try to get me to go and tell him how much I'm up. You know what I do? He just tell me how, he just showed me how much he ignored me and loved me. He don't care about none of that because he called me in the state that I'm in. He called me just the way I am, so why can you tell me what's wrong? You know me just the way I am. Amen. You don't see me the way that I see myself, and so then I'm continuing to see myself the way that he sees me. I suck. I suck. I welcome around him. I welcome in his presence. I welcome in the kingdom. I welcome to everything that he has, except for his crown and his throne. I am equal with him. He will hold nothing for me. He will hold nothing for you. If you ask him, he'll tell you because he don't want you to be angry and he don't want you to fail. Jesus loves us all. The same. None of us is special. We're special because Jesus loves us. And because he chose us to know him and how great he is and how much yes. he adores us. Yes. Look all the beautiful things that he said for us. You may not see a forgiveness. You got grace. You got mercy. You got his spirit. He can't get his life. You got God. You got the Father. And you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. What more Jesus got to do? I know that. And he can't get his life. He can't get his life. He can't get his life. all of you, the first 34 books, all he did was lie on God. And told you that they that, that, that didn't love you. But what did he do? He came to God and said he cracked the God, made a body for himself, and came down here to see we can touch and handle him. And see, and take and see that he won't. No more yeah. could they lie over them. They lied over them and said that he never came here. Yeah. Who my friend? Who came to my friend? Who changed in my life? All right. All right. Who changed in your life? Who changed in your life? Who changed in your friend? Who came in the store? Who's paying your bills? Who's depending on? Who's, who's doing all of it? Who's saving your life? Who's waking you up every day? The white giver, Jesus, the king of all kings, the great I am. I know it who's he is. Just I I, I love the presentations I get from I love what he's doing. I love the great things that he is doing in my life. I love how he's teaching me how to hide in him. I love me, how the spirit are believe me. Not because of me, because of him, because they believe him. So if they believe him, they believe me, because I'm going to join him with him. I don't have to be afraid of them. When I look now, I look at everything in the spirit now. Because in the spirit, where the truth is. Because when Jesus casts out the spirit, that's what they do. They tell the truth on that side. And in his presence, they tell the truth. But they lie to us on this side. Because that's what the law The lie is on this side. Just like you said, great the truth came with Jesus came. But when you cast them out, they can't lie in this presence. We can't lie in this presence either. So they tell the truth. And I just thank you for the great things that he's teaching me and the things that he's showing, not just me, that he's showing us all in the body. How he set us all free, how we're all growing every day, even though he's lying, trying to make us think that we're not crawling in him and that we're not getting great and that we're losing and that we're losing lives. Every day I see us winning. 
Every day I want to win, every day I want to win, and I don't pay no attention to that God anymore. I know Jesus loves us all and adores us, and he got this victory. And he won already, and we're all finished. All we got to do is believe him and sit back and get ready. Because he won already. You got to know who already. So I can go in the place all the way for us, and I'm going to be with him. All I got to do is live it out. And wait on it. I know what my expected it is, and so do you. We all know what it is. We just got to live it out and wait on Jesus. Don't fight for us. That's all I came to do. Just a few more and let them fight for you, because we can't fight the spirit and the power that we're up against. So now I let Jesus do it because it's too high for me and I'm over punching the air. I cannot beat them. I have no power over them and they do not listen to me. So I have to say the things that Jesus says in order to get them to listen. Because Jesus is the only one that has power over all flesh and over all things. The great I am. The king of all kings. The name that is above every name. So this man came today to get past me today. He had, he had a shirt. His name was spelled in Jesus. And cursed him. And then it came out to a cross. And when he walked, when he walked past me, I felt the anointing on him. And then when I pressed the shirt out, I looked and I said, ooh, Jesus. And then the inside of my spirit said, Jesus, be tired on the inside. And then he pointed Right while I'm not working to get nervous though, and then I heard the Jesus say, the name that is above that be name. And I think it was teaching me how to now begin to put it into my vocabulary and to say it more. Why? Because it shakes room and it moves spirit. And they tremble at his name. And they fear his name. Are all connected with his spirit. You want results? Say his name. You want to say it to the young woman? Say his name. Lift him up. Lift up the name of Jesus. After you put it in your spirit, put it in your vocabulary, put it in your spirit, put it in our vocabulary so that we can begin to lift up his name and shake things up. Because that's what we're called to do. Yes, Lord. Amen. The name that is above every name. They, they don't move at God. Everybody saying God down here because there's many a God Jesus told me. There's many of them, but there's only one true and living God, and his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So true. Oh God, so true. So I just I just I just thank you, Jesus. Uh, I just thank you for what you're doing in all of our lives. I thank you for what you're doing in the body. I see you, Jesus, and I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for my life. I thank you for all of our lives. And for your life, it is only because of your life that I'm alive and that I am. That we all listen, that we move, and that we have our bids, and we are grateful to you. And we thank you, Jesus. And we pray and we earn it. And we thank you for protecting and keeping us. We thank you for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your understanding, for your spirit, for your love. And you put in this house and in this body that we have one for another. We thank you for your truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord.
you have a body of Christ that you can come to to be helped in your need. It's there. Because God put it there. And as long as he puts it there, it's there for his people. You know, most of these people, they think that the so-called pastor or whatever is supposed to be like it's a corporation. This is a this under the name is, is a corporation, but this is the body of Christ. This is his church. This is his people. And he provides for his people. There's been so many miracles going on with providing for the church. I, I don't even talk about it that much no more. Because it's just he it's just here. It's just here for his people. It's like these you know, when, you, when miracles happen every day in your life, it don't you know, it's not an amazing thing anymore. It's what God does. He provides. He delivers. He helps. He, 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 he keeps us out of more stuff than we fell into. You know, and then he confirms himself all over the place so we all know. Ain't nobody doing this for none of us. But one name under the heavens by which man might be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. And he's the one that's coming to each and every one of our lives. To help us, to bring us through, and to deliver us. Let's just have a word of prayer before we go into his word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you so much, Lord, for all the great things that you're doing in the midst of your people, Lord, the protection you provided, Lord, the deliverances you provided, Father God, and all of the blessings that you provided and all the benefits, Lord. We just come to worship you and thank you and praise you, Lord, and lift you up for all that you've done for us, Lord. And we just ask that you might increase our faith, Lord, increase our love, increase the fruits of, of your spirit, Lord, that we might be a blessing one to another. Lord, we ask that your word might go out with power and authority, that it might strengthen each and every individual, Lord, that you might just open up our, our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears to all the great things that you're doing in the midst that we might rejoice and praise you for being in our lives. Lord, we ask all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. 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 I, I praise God for the testimonies. I praise God for what he's doing. It's just a confirmation, man. The title of the message that the Lord put on my heart today was, No Longer Tossed to and Fro. <laughs> Yes, praise the Lord over here. Yeah. You, you got it. That's what it is. You know, it's, we're getting to that point where we're not these spirits and these powers aren't shaking us and, 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 and affecting us in the way that it's doing in the world and the things that are happening around us that has everything in so much of a turmoil and so much sorrow and so much sadness and just so much angst and all this stress. They say stress is even being more 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 has more effect on the body than 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 everything else that's going on around. They're saying that people are so, you know, worried about this and worried about that. But you know, we serve a God. We serve the Lord Jesus who takes care of his people and watches over us and protects us and provides for us. Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I want to go to the 14th verse. That we henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, everything, all this teaching, all this word that's coming forth that people and these spirits and these powers are saying to bring forth confusion and doubt and fear. By the slay of men in cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. You know, uh, Brother Kevin was talking about them spirits and everything, talking and saying how they feel, what they say, and trying to confuse and, 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 and make you doubt and fear the things that are going on around you. But you know, it's the voice of Jesus and the words of Jesus start, start to saturate your heart, your mind, and they start to be the only voice that you listen to. You know, you start to be able to bind those powers up, put 
put those powers down and listen only to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice and no other voice will they obey. You start to shut out all those other voices, all that doubt and all that fear that's going on around in the world and you focus on the promises and the blessings and the deliverances that Jesus promised us and you will see them manifest in your life. Let's go to John. St. John, 6th chapter. It's John, 6th chapter. And I want to go to the 26th verse. That's St. John, 6th chapter, 26th verse. And Jesus, and Jesus, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which is endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him, God the Father, sealed. You know, when you get that sealing in Jesus Christ, and Christ seals you in his spirit, and spirit and seals the spirit in you. You know for a fact and for surety, he is not going to let you be moved, shaken, or taken away from him in any way, shape, or form. But in that, the things he has done in your life, nobody else could do but him. Verse 28. Then said they and them, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he sent, has sent. And that was Jesus to tell us the truth about the Lord, about himself, about God, about the Holy Ghost, and about what he has provided for all those that trust and believe in him. And all that the promises that he will fulfill, you know, he's going to fulfill all those things up when we get to heaven. But he got power down here on earth. And that's what we need some power. When we get to heaven, everything, devil ain't going to be in heaven. Flesh ain't going to be in heaven. Everything, you, 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 you're going to have everything you need in heaven. We need him down here now. We need him. We need his power now. Because now is where the battle is. Now is where the problem is. Now is where the enemy is raging at. And he has come down to tell his people what he has to give them and what he can do for each and every one of us. Then verse 30, they said, therefore, and then what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doth, what doth thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. That abundant life that he has provided for us by his spirit that can quicken us and strengthen us. And, and as Kevin was saying, you know, just Hit, he hits you with that anointing and all of a sudden it just picks everything up and, and, and puts everything down that's not of him and encourages you and strengthens you. Put that smile on your face that you know that nobody else could have put on there but Jesus. For the bread of God, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. You know, and that's the state that we're growing into now where we just want more and more of Jesus and just want to talk more and more about Jesus and just want to listen more and more about Jesus and just want to hear more and more about Jesus. And, you know, just the, just the power that's in his name alone is uplifting and strengthening that, 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 that he encourages us so more that we just want more and more of him. And the beautiful thing about him is he never runs out. He just keeps getting greater and greater and greater. Verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He'll provide for each and every one of us 
everything we need to exist in this world, no matter what is surrounding us, no matter what the problems are, no matter what the sorrows are. If we eat of him, eat of his flesh, and drink of his blood, his life will be inside of us. We are eating of his flesh now because we are reading and believing and accepting what he said, which he said, Lord, I come on the volume of a book to do thy will. That's to tell us about what he will do if we trust in him and believe in him. In verse 36, but I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not to the Jews, most of those that didn't believe him. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. I just love that about Jesus. He don't care who you are, what you did, what 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 you're under, what 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 whatever is whatever in your life. He will not cast you out. Just keep coming. Just keep trusting. Just keep believing. And you will be praising and thanking him for the changes and the deliverances that he made in your life. Kevin, your testimony is so beautiful because you know what? You're getting joy in just the common things that are about life. See, most people don't have joy in the common things. that They, they got no joy on their job. All, all their job is, is a bunch of problems, a bunch of sorrow. And the reason they don't have no joy in their job is because they don't have Jesus in them on their job. But when you get Jesus in you, no matter where you are, you're going to have joy. Because he brings that joy and everything around you got to bow down to Jesus. Because he got the power to give you, his presence alone is the power to give you joy, peace, and love. The fruits of the Spirit will start to develop inside of you. Yeah, they got to be pruned. Yeah, once in a while it gets a little tough. But if you keep watering and you've been planted, it's going, and you keep hearing his word, it's going to keep growing. You just keep listening to him, trusting in him, reading his word, and accepting what he says, and knowing that the enemy is a liar. And there is no truth about him. And I, God's word through Jesus is the truth. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. You know, I don't think Jesus wanted to leave heaven and, and the Father, but because the Father sent him, he came. And he, he was obedient. That was, I mean, that was not suffer for him to be separated from the Father. And to come down here and come to all this flesh and all this doubt and all this fear and all this misunderstanding. But he was obedient to the Father. And he wants us to be obedient to his word so that the Father can do the things he wants to do through Jesus in our lives. And this is the Father's will which he has sent me, that all of which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at that last day. Then the, G then the Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which cometh down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then he saith, I come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written of the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh to me. There is no other name under heaven and earth by which man might be saved and there's no other way to come into salvation except through Jesus Christ and through his word and his power and trusting and believing in him. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. And we know that is a fact in our lives because that bread is feeding us each and every day, opening our eyes in the morning and giving us rest in the evening and giving us peace throughout the day through his power 
and his deliverance. This is the bread that's coming down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. He's the only one that I know of that came with the proclamation that he had the power to abolish death and bring forth life. And I'm finding out in my own life he can even take away the fear of death and give you the confidence that his life is starting and is abiding in you. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And he did that on the cross. He sacrificed his life, the lamb without spot or blemish, the acceptable sacrifice for, from God so that we can be reconnected to God through Jesus. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in, in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the Father has sent me, and I, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your Father did eat man, and they are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. And we are eating of the bread of life, we are eating of the flesh of life, and we are drinking of the blood of his life as we read, believe, and trust in the word that he left of life, and he will manifest his spirit in our lives. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying who can hear it. And truly it is a hard saying, but we thank God that he's able to bring to pass every word that he has ever spoken. When Jesus himself knew that his disciples murmured that he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What if he shall see the Son of Man therefore ascend up to where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. They are life-giving, power-giving, and, and able to give you everything that the Lord has promised. Let's go to John, let's go to Hebrews, fifth chapter. Hebrews, fifth chapter. I'm going to go to the fifth verse. So also Christ glorified himself, not himself, to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, and strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, he was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. As we read his word and trust in his word and Ask him to bring us into the obedience that only he can fulfill in our lives. He will start to show himself strong by making the changes that are needed in our lives and giving us the confidence and the belief that he's doing everything that he said he would do. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. For when the time you are to be teachers, you have need 
when they teach you again, which be the first principles and the oracles of God, and will become of such need milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But the strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And we start to really start to, the Lord start to guide you and tell you, like what you were saying, no to the things of the enemy and the things that the enemy might try to confuse you with or rip you off with or deceive you with, the Lord will come in and start to give you the words to say so that that power or that spirit or that person that is under that influence might be bound, you know, might not have that effect and the Lord will keep you from, from falling into a lot of unnecessary problems. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. And it started at the first verse. And Paul was saying, And brother, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as under carnal, even as under babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here too you are not able to bear it, neither yet are you now able. For ye are yet carnal. Whereas there's among you envy and strife and divisions, ye are not carnal as walkers and walkers men. For as one say I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who then is Apollo? Apollos? Apollo. But ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave every man. And I am so grateful that he did give me a minister that preached the gospel with power and the fullness of the power of God. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. And it's the increase that only God can give, that confidence, that trust, that you know within yourself that you you're getting closer and closer to him, and as you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. Verse 7, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, and ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which giveth unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another build thereon, but let every man take heed of how he buildeth thereupon. For, for other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus and everything that he has made available to each and every one of us. Let's go to to John, St. John, and I want to go to chapter, chapter 1, I want to start at the 10th verse. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And guess what, the world still don't know him. And you are blessed because he is coming to your life to tell you how much he cares about you, and that he wants to come and live inside of you. He came into his own and his own received him not. 